So, as you all know, I have been reading this book called Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. And um, I'm still in the prehistoric phase of it. So the prehistoric phase of any kind of history book is basically the point where everybody kind of guesses what happened. They look at the footprints. They look at the bones that they find. They look at the uh, fossils. They look at everything. And they make a, a, an educated guess what happened. And there's a lot of debate about what happened. Anyways, uh, so that's... so, And there's a lot of, like, he just, like... I guess someone will just kind of throw their ideology out there at this point. So this author has an interesting ideology about humanity. He has the belief that human beings have been a blight on the animal kingdom since they have existed. You know how most people kind of think that nowadays, because of greenhouse gases, because of throwing plastic into the ocean, because of like that kind of stuff, humans are a blight on the animal kingdom, a blight on the ecosystem of the earth. Well, this guy believes that humans have always been a blight on the ecosystem of the earth. And he explains it by saying that human beings are so they're, they're too smart. They're too smart for the world. They have they have are built they are able to adjust to new climates and to new areas too quickly for any of the other animals to catch up. Because they don't have to evolve to adjust to a new climate. They can invent a technology that will help them adjust. Like if they want to go up into the north. They started in Africa where it was nice and warm. But if they wanted to go up into the north where like Russia, Siberia, where Alaska was. They were able to do that without having to evolve like skin that was resistant to cold. All they had to do was like kill a bunch of animals. Take their carcasses and wrap their carcasses around them and sew them into clothing that was warm enough for them to survive out up there. And they had the ability and create the ability to make fires so that they could cook up there. That's all they had to do to get up there. Another animal would have to wait millions of years for his features to evolve so that he could get up there. But humans just, just immediately went up there. So the immediate problem that comes from this kind of quick adjustment to environment is that human beings were able to go places where other animals had not evolved to be afraid of or to be able to fight humans. So in Africa, that's where the human evolved, that's where like the sapien or the, the homo sapiens, that's where they evolved into humans. And so alongside the humans, there were other animals that evolved there that evolved the instinct to keep away from humans. If they see humans, they stay away. But as soon as human beings got away from that huge landmass, like there was one point in history where they invented boats and then they sailed their way to Australia, which is like over a hundred miles from the nearest land. They sailed their way all the way to Australia and Australia was a completely human free zone. No humans whatsoever, just a bunch of marsupials, a bunch of, and back in the day, Back before humans existed, there were a bunch of giant animals. Like there were a bunch of like, giant kangaroos. There were like a, a a bunch of really really huge animals that just had existed there for a long time, for billions and billions of years or whatever. And then humans came, and these animals, when they saw humans, they didn't even recognize humans. They just see something by its size, and they're like, okay, these guys are kind of short. They don't seem too much of a threat. They didn't realize that humans were smart and humans could trap animals and humans could team up and invent like weapons that could make animals easier to kill. And so slowly over time, these large animals that existed in Australia just got hunted and killed by humans. And uh, that's just what human beings have done. And I think large animals tend to have like very slow birth rates. Like, for instance, the elephant, which is still in existence, but it's a good example. I think I think it takes, like, half of the elephant's life to give birth to one child, and then half of its life to give birth to another one. So it takes a long time for an elephant to multiply, and I think it's the same was true for these giant animals. So when a human started killing off animals, even if it was killing them very slowly, it was still killing them faster than they could give birth. And so eventually they killed the last animal and then that animal was extinct. And that's just the way that human beings have been.
They also did that when they went to America because they had to get to America eventually. First, they clothed themselves. They invented the technology of warm clothing, got into Siberia where all the snow was. And then eventually the sea was low enough that there was actually a bridge from Siberia, a land bridge from Siberia all the way to Alaska. And they walked across that land bridge. Human beings are interesting because they actually are very exploratory. They want to see everything. They want to explore every piece of land because uh, the, the history book that I'm reading, it also shows like this map and it shows like how quickly human beings just went everywhere. And human beings aren't that quick at moving, but they just want to go everywhere. And so like, yeah, human beings eventually crossed that bridge into America. And then in America, they did the same thing. They kind of just ruined, killed... Uh, the mammoth. The mammoth was extinct. The uh, saber-toothed tiger. Apparently, there were American versions of horses that they also killed. Um, and they just killed a bunch of animals. And they also killed the plants. Because this is something else that I learned about humans. Humans would, were smart enough that they didn't just walk into a forest because they knew that like animals had the advantage over them in forests because they couldn't see that far. They had, humans had more of an advantage in open fields because then they could plan out the area and plan out where they were going to, how they were going to hunt the animal or whatever. So humans, instead of just like avoiding forests, they would take fire, which they had invented a way to make fire easily, you know, to make it appear. They would take fire and then they would burn down entire forests. This is way back in the past. Like you think about human beings doing this now, ruining forests. You think they're ruining the, you know, the ecosystem now? They were doing it, they've been doing it since they have existed. Because humans just are, they're too smart for their environment. And that's the argument that he's making. And it's an interesting one. It's one that I haven't heard before. And I like it. I don't really feel like good or bad. I'm completely neutral about it. I'm just fascinated by it. But it's interesting, isn't it? I guess that's all I have to say in this episode of the Coquino Podcast. I will see you guys next time. Hope you had a good time. Goodbye.